Okay. 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 All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Ready to dive deep into something really important today. Definitely. And it's something that affects every single one of us. You got it. Mental health. We've got some interesting source material that puts it right out there. Mental health is at least as important, their words, not mine, as physical health. Powerful statement. Isn't it? And it's so true. We're going to unpack that, you know, what it actually means for us day to day. We're talking anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, PTSD, schizophrenia. A whole range of mental health conditions. The source even mentions eating disorders, disruptive behavior, and dissocial disorders. Oh, right. And neurodevelopmental disorders, too. But... You know, beyond just listing these conditions, what we really want to get into today are practical strategies. How can we actually manage our mental well-being? What can we do right here, right now to feel better? Love that approach. And the source really digs into that. I was struck by how it emphasizes that mental health isn't some abstract concept. It directly affects our daily lives. Yeah, how so? Well, it uses this phrase, how they feel to us, as well as our ability to do the things we need and want to do. Wow. When you put it like that, it's like, well, yeah, obviously, if you're struggling mentally, it's going to impact everything, your work, your relationships. Exactly. It affects how we function in the world, everything from simple tasks to achieving our biggest goals. OK, so how do we even begin to build that solid mental foundation? Where do we start? Well, the source introduces this really interesting framework called the five C's of positive youth development. Five C's. OK, I'm listening. But wait, youth development. I'm way past my youth. Aha, uh -huh, right. Me too. But honestly, these principles apply to everyone, no matter your age. It's really about cultivating a positive mindset and building resilience. All right, I'm sold. Let's hear these C's. Hit me with the first one. All right, C number one, connection. Connection. Okay, so like having friends, family, a sense of community. Exactly. Feeling connected to others gives us a sense of belonging. We feel supported, like we're part of something larger than ourselves. That's huge for our mental well-being. Makes sense. I know when I feel isolated, like I'm going through something alone, it definitely weighs on me. It's fundamental. Okay, ready for C number two? Lay it on me. Contribution. Contribution. Okay, so doing something that matters, helping others, making a difference. You nailed it. It's about having a sense of purpose beyond ourselves. This could be volunteering in your community, helping a friend in need, or even just being a supportive colleague at work. I can see how that would boost your mood, knowing you're having a positive impact on the world around you. Exactly. And it doesn't have to be some grand gesture. Even small acts of kindness can make a difference. Okay, on to scene number three. Hit me. Control. Control. Hmm. Interesting. What does that mean in this context? It's about having agency in our lives making choices that align with our values. This could mean choosing healthy foods, setting boundaries in relationships, or pursuing a career path that truly inspires you. It's about feeling empowered to shape your own life, even if it's just in small ways. I like that. It's not about controlling every little thing that happens to you. It's about making conscious choices where you can. Precisely. All right, ready for scene number four? We're getting close. Bring it on. This one's particularly relevant these days with all the stress we're facing. It's Coping. Coping, yeah, that's huge. But what does healthy coping actually look like? I'm the queen of stress eating, and I know that's not the answer. Uh-huh. We've all got our coping mechanisms, right? But yeah, there are definitely healthier ways to manage stress. The source emphasizes this. Like what? Give me some examples. Well, exercise is a fantastic one. Even 30 minutes of brisk walking can do wonders. Walking. Seriously. Seriously. It releases endorphins, those feel-good chemicals in our brains, and it helps reduce those pesky stress hormones. Huh. See, I thought I had to be hitting the gym, sweating it out. Nope. A simple walk can be incredibly effective, and it's something most people can do regardless of their fitness level. All right. I'm convinced. What else? Well, the source also mentions things like getting enough sleep, practicing relaxation techniques, cultivating gratitude, and focusing on positivity. Yeah, but sometimes, yeah. I gotta be honest, that stuff sounds a little, I don't know, woo-woo to me. Is there any real science behind it? Oh, absolutely. Adequate sleep is crucial for emotional regulation and cognitive function. It's not just about feeling rested, it's about how our brains function. Relaxation techniques like deep breathing or meditation can help calm the nervous system and reduce anxiety. Okay, so there's real physiological stuff happening. What about gratitude and positivity? 
Well, research has shown that gratitude can actually increase feelings of happiness and well-being. It shifts our focus to the good things in our lives, even when things are tough. And focusing on the positive, even in small ways, can help reduce those negative thinking patterns that can drag us down. Okay, I'm starting to get it. It's not just about thinking happy thoughts. It's about actively cultivating a more positive mindset. Exactly. All right, ready for the final C? This one's a good one. Give it to me. Confidence. Confidence. Okay. I can see how that ties into mental well-being. But how do we actually build confidence? Well, the source suggests setting achievable goals and celebrating your wins, no matter how small. When you accomplish something, even something small, it reinforces your belief in yourself. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like, hey, I did that. I can do other things too. Exactly. And as you build confidence, you're more likely to take on new challenges and bounce back from setbacks. Wow. These five C's are really powerful. Connection, contribution, control, coping, and confidence. They really paint a picture of what contributes to a strong mental foundation. It's a holistic approach. And the best part is these are all areas we can actively work on. So it's not like we're just stuck with whatever mental state we're in. Right. We can actually make changes and improve our well-being. Exactly. It's empowering, isn't it? Totally. So the source also provides some really practical tips for managing mental well-being. We've already touched on exercise, but what else can we do? Well, it also highlights the importance of healthy eating. What we fuel our bodies with directly affects how we feel both physically and mentally. Okay, so what I eat can actually impact my mood. Absolutely. Certain nutrients like omega-3 fatty acids have been linked to improved mood and brain function. And of course, when we nourish our bodies with wholesome foods, we simply feel better overall. It's like we're treating ourselves with kindness and that can have a ripple effect on our mental state. Mm, interesting. I'm definitely going to pay more attention to what I'm eating. What else? The source also emphasizes the importance of setting realistic goals. Uh, goals. Right. We talked about that with confidence, didn't we? Exactly. Yeah. When we set achievable goals and actually reach them, it gives us a sense of accomplishment, which boosts our self-belief. It's a positive feedback loop. I like it. So not setting myself up for failure with some huge, overwhelming goal. Start small build momentum. Exactly. Even crossing a small task off your to-do list can give you a little boost. It all adds up. Okay, so we've got exercise, healthy eating, sleep, relaxation techniques, gratitude, positivity, realistic goals. Mm -hmm. Anything else we should be thinking about? Yes, absolutely. Let's talk about coping mechanisms. Coping mechanisms. You mentioned those earlier, right? Right. So coping mechanisms are basically the strategies we use to deal with stress, difficult emotions, or challenging situations. We all have them. Okay, so like when I'm stressed, I bake. Is that a coping mechanism? It absolutely is. And it can be a very healthy one, especially if it brings you joy and helps you de-stress. Okay, good. So what are some other examples? And are there like bad coping mechanisms? Oh, absolutely. The key is to identify whether your coping mechanisms are actually supporting your well-being or potentially harming it in the long run. So, for example, things like exercise, talking to a friend, journaling, listening to music, practicing mindfulness, those are generally considered healthy coping mechanisms. Okay, they help you process your emotions, de-stress, and move forward in a positive way. Exactly. But then there are coping mechanisms that might feel good in the moment, but ultimately don't serve us well. Things like excessive drinking, isolating yourself from others, or engaging in self-destructive behaviors. Right. Those might provide temporary relief, but they can lead to bigger problems down the road. Exactly. So it's about being mindful of our coping strategies and making sure they're actually supporting our well-being, not sabotaging it. This has been super insightful. I feel like I'm walking away with a whole new perspective on mental health and a bunch of practical tools I can actually use. That's awesome to hear. And remember, taking care of your mental well-being is a journey, not a destination. It's about making small, sustainable changes over time and being kind to yourself along the way. So true. Oh, before we wrap up, you know, one thing that really struck me from the source was its mention of um, stigma, discrimination, and violations of human rights related to mental health. Yeah, that's a really important point. It's a reminder that even though we've made some progress in raising awareness about mental health, stigma unfortunately still exists, and that can prevent people from seeking the help they need or talking openly about their struggles. It's like, it's okay to break your leg and go to the doctor, but somehow it's not always seen as okay to seek help for your mental health. Exactly. There's still this sense of shame or weakness associated with mental health challenges, and that needs to change. 
Absolutely. So, you know, it makes me wonder, what can we each do to create a more supportive and understanding environment around mental health? Well, I think it starts with education and open conversations like the one we're having right now. The more we talk about mental health, the more we normalize it, the less stigma there will be. Right. It's like if we all start sharing our experiences, it creates this sense of, hey, I'm not alone in this. Exactly. And we can also challenge misconceptions and stereotypes about mental health when we encounter them. And of course, advocating for better mental health resources is crucial. We need to make sure everyone has access to the support they need. So much good stuff in this deep dive. I feel like I've learned so much. Me too. It's been a great conversation. Yeah. And to our listeners out there, we'd love to hear from you. What resonated with you most from this episode? What are some of your go-to coping strategies? Let's keep this conversation going. Share your thoughts, your experiences. We're all in this together. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. And remember, taking care of your mental well-being is an investment in yourself. It's worth it.